Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the Ryzen 7 5700X 3D. It's been about a year since it's been released. It's using the older AM4 platform, which came out way back in 2016, which is about nine years ago. And nine years ago, I was working at Best Buy, living the dream. I was the team leader in home theater. Oh! Yeah, but anyways, before we start, if you're starting a brand new build in 2025, you have zero parts, I would say it's probably worth it just to go to AM5. Parts are a little more expensive, but I think in the long run, that'll be a better purchase. Now, I'm talking to the people who already have an AM4 board, whether you have an X570, a B550, even a B450. Let's say you have a non 3D 5000 series CPU or a 3000 or even a 2000 series CPU. Is it worth it to upgrade to the Ryzen 7 5700X 3D? Or should you just scrap all your parts, go straight to AM5? Me, Klaus, and my boy Josh Allen up here are going to figure out if the Ryzen 7 5700X 3D is worth it in 2025. It's going to be pretty. It's going to be pretty sicko mode. So before we get started, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And every video I post will be more sicko mode than the last. All right. Let's get to it. First things first, let's talk about the specs of the Ryzen 7 5700X 3D. The Ryzen 7 5700X 3D was released in January of 2024. It had an MSRP of about $250. It's gonna have eight cores, 16 threads, kinda has a low boost clock of about 4.1 gigahertz. But what makes this processor so good is the amount of L3 cache that it has, 96 megabytes. And this isn't just any cache. This is AMD's 3D vCache technology, which is where they three-dimensionally stack cache on top of the CPU, creating some of the world's fastest gaming desktop processors. So basically, more 3D vCache equals more 3D apps. Wait, uh, that's not right. 3D equals more cache equals more better. Now, AMD's 3D vCache technology has been around for a couple years now. The first CPU to do it was the 5700X 3D's older brother, the 5800X 3D. And we all know that CPU was bending over Intel i7s. She, this thing was even bending over its own CPUs. So yeah, this CPU was packing a punch. The 5700X 3D though, is not that far behind when it comes to performance. For a fraction of the cost, 449 is pretty high. And since it's out of production, resellers are inflating the prices even more. So yeah, in 2025, the 5700X 3D is the better way to go. But moving back to the 5700X 3D specs, obviously the CPU is using the AM4 socket type, which uses DDR4 RAM, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. In 2025, DDR4 is still pretty good for gaming. So on paper, the CPU isn't gonna really wow you, but perhaps it'll wow us in bed. I mean in benchmarks and gaming. But first, let's talk about the build that I have it in. Obviously we're using the AMD Ryzen 7 5700X 3D, and it's being cooled by an NZXT Kraken Z73 cooler. And it's actually on an older Gigabyte ARS Pro B450 motherboard, 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM. For storage, I went with a one terabyte WD Black NVMe, and we have it paired with an RTX 4070 Super and my black cat, Josh Allen. A 150 watt power supply, and it's all inside of the NZXT H9 Elite case. So overall, it's a pretty sick looking build. Some may say it looks pretty sicko mode. All right, enough of that. Drake and Travis Scott are gonna F me in the ass for copyright infringement. Moving on to benchmarks. So the first benchmark I ran was Cinebench R24. Now, honestly, I don't even know why I'm showing this benchmark. The 5700X 3D wasn't really made for multi-core benchmarks like this. So when you're comparing it to other AMD processors that are supposed to be better than this processor, they score better than this processor. Moving on to the single core test, it scores a decent 86. But like I said, the 5700X 3D wasn't designed for benchmarks. It was designed for gaming. So with that being said, let's play some games. Let's play some Tetris, motherfucker. 
So the first game we ran was Cyberpunk. So 1440p and 1080p at ultra settings. So averaging over 100 FPS, which is pretty solid for 1440p, especially for Cyberpunk. 1% and 0.1% lows are also pretty good. 1080p is phenomenal. 163, 101, and 80. Since 1% and 0.1% lows are getting nowhere near 60 frames per second, gameplay will be buttery smooth, especially if you have a higher refresh rate monitor. Like on this 240Hz 1440p 31.5 inch gaming monitor from Titan Army, which I will be reviewing in another video. But anyways, back to this video. The next game I ran was Starfield. Once again, 1440p and 1080p at ultra settings. I'm gonna tell you right now, Starfield has been pretty rough on GPUs as well as CPUs. So the fact that I'm averaging over 80 FPS in both 1080p and 1440p and having 0.1% lows over 40 means that the CPU is handling it like a champ. Now I know 1440p is more about the GPU's performance, but it wasn't really far off from 1080p. So far the CPU is kicking ass. Uh, I said kicking, not kissing. But anyways, then I ran Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is an older game. However, it is still a very CPU intense game. At 1080p, this CPU pretty much manhandles Shadow of the Tomb Raider. 259, 188, 162 is nothing to complain about. So once again, if you have a 240 hertz monitor, smooth as balls. The next game I ran was Hogwarts Legacy. Once again, 1440p and 1080p at ultra settings. And average FPS and 1% lows were either identical or very close. And when I saw these numbers, I kind of had to do a double take. I was like, no ways 1440p getting the same FPS as 1080p. So I reran the test three more times and still got these numbers. But anyways, pretty solid FPS with both resolutions, especially because Hogwarts Legacy is a pretty GPU and CPU intensive game. You don't really have anything to complain about when playing this game. The next game I ran was Red Dead Redemption 2, 1440p and 1080p at ultra settings. And just take a look at those numbers. 109, 90, and 70 for 1440p, 138, 111, and 102 for 1080p. That kind of FPS is so good that it makes you kind of wonder, is upgrading to an AM5 CPU even necessary for this game? And for this game being released back in 2018, not only does it push modern PC's limits, but the game itself still looks really good. And the final game I ran was GTA 5. Once again, 1440p and 1080p at ultra settings. This is an older game, so you would expect the CPU and a 4070 Super to play it pretty well which it did at 1080p, 171, 128, and 77. Pretty solid numbers, no complaints there. Super smooth gameplay. While I was peacefully protesting on the freeway, my FPS never dropped below 60, so pretty good. So after all these tests, after the benchmarks, after gaming, getting all these numbers, and stuff. What does this all mean? Well, it means that the Ryzen 7 5700X 3D is a pretty solid upgrade path if you already have an AM4 motherboard. So if you're on the fence of whether you should upgrade to an AM5 motherboard and an AM5 processor, and then you're gonna have to update your RAM to DDR5 RAM, I would just upgrade to this CPU and put more of your money towards a good GPU like the 4070 Super, or if you can get your hands on an upcoming 5070, and I promise you there will be no complaints. The fact that it can give you 163 frames per second average when playing Cyberpunk and give you pretty solid FPS on other games that are known to be very demanding games on your CPU, such as Hogwarts Legacy and Starfield, means we should be asking ourselves, why, 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 why? Why? Why would you even upgrade to AM5? Sure, if you got the money, by all means upgrade AM5. Just make sure you get a CPU with AMD 3D vCache. But in 2025, those CPUs are going to be pretty hard to get, and you may even have to pay over $500 if you buy these CPUs from resellers. And in 2025, they still have CPUs for this platform that are still kicking ass. Makes me one of the biggest fans of the AM4 platform. Now, I'm not going to say anything stupid like 
like AM5 sucks or that AM5 is trash, I actually have a Ryzen 7 7800X 3D and that CPU is a beast. But if you already have an AM4 board, it just makes no sense to upgrade just yet. Keep using it and upgrade to the Ryzen 7 5700X 3D. I promise you won't regret it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Are you thinking of upgrading to the CPU? And if you do have the CPU, do you wish you went to AM5? Or is this plenty good enough for you? But anyways, me and my boys Klaus and Josh Allen, we work really hard to make sure our content in each video is more sicko mode than the last. And like always, have a sicko mode day.